Hi, I'm Jeanette from Growth Unlimited. You know, every one of us have different things that we do to handle crises or difficulties that come up in our lives. And we have had, over the last several months, ample opportunity to take a look at some of the things that we choose to do and uh, perhaps to decide to make some changes in the way that we have traditionally handled the things that we have to face on a day-to-day -day basis. In my role as a life coach, I spend a lot of time watching people and noticing the things that they do. And uh, I use that information to work with the people that I'm working with to help them decide which things are most helpful, uh, appropriate, and successful in achieving the goals that they have for themselves. And I use the same technique as I work with, uh, on my own personal development. One of the things that I have been noticing as, we, as I've walked through this crisis along with everyone else is that I've been able to identify seven different ways that people handle uh, crisis, seven different types of behaviors. And in this series of videos, we're going to be talking about what those types are and some of the characteristics of them. And then in future videos, I'm going to go ahead and delve into each of the types that are listed in today's video and talk about the benefits and the liabilities of choosing that kind of behavior and so that you can decide whether or not that if you are engaging in that kind of behavior whether that's something that is working for you the way you want it to work ultimately my hope is that we're able to help you gain more self-awareness about yourself because as this is something i'm finding for myself too uh, as i looked at these different characteristics there were things that I found that I had used that I had to take a look at and decide whether they were whether or not they were serving me based on what my values and my beliefs are. And it's been interesting because there isn't a single one of these seven characteristics that I would actually say is wrong or right. Uh, I think that that kind of judgment can actually cause more problems for everybody. But there are, and there are some, some of these characteristics that may be beneficial to use in certain situations and, and then not in others. The secret to personal development and the secret to learning how to take control of your life is being able to differentiate and having more tools at your fingertips so that you can pick the one that's going to work the best for you. So, that's the purpose for what we're doing today and and also in the future videos in this series uh, i want to be able to help you make the choices that you need to make so that you can take control of your life the way you want to so let's get into it the seven different characteristics or classifications of behavior that i came up with start with number one the denier. Now, people who are taking on this role and behaving using this particular technique are the people who deny that the problem even exists. Uh, and uh, the benefits that I see of doing that is if you deny it, then you don't have to deal with it. And uh, you can uh, try to go on ignoring it and uh, then potentially it will go away so that it isn't something you have to worry about. The problem with this particular kind of behavior is that the problems typically do not go away. And uh, you can find yourself spiraling in deeper and deeper and having more and more distress and more and more problems because of it. The second characteristic or role is that of the victim. Now the victim actually appears to celebrate the process of uh, how what is happening to them because of the situation that they are in. They uh, 
they, like the denier, have a tendency not to want to take any kind of responsibility, but they are, they are caught up in the pain and the frustration of the situation, and so they're looking for relief for that kind of thing, rather than looking within themselves. They look outside of themselves. These are the people that uh, are actively waiting for their next stimulus check from the government. These are people who are uh, kind of sitting back and looking to other people to solve the problems. Uh, these are the people that stand on the street corners and in the medians uh, with signs begging for food. These are people who are seeing themselves in the victim role and uh, they oftentimes really try to get into that role in the hopes that somebody else will solve their problem for them. Okay, the third characteristic or role that people play is that of the joiner. Now, the joiner is the person who is looking outside of themselves again for validation and support in resolving the issue. They have a tendency to jump on the bandwagon of any new uh, novel experience that's in place. That, this is done partially to help them get a better idea of what it is that's going on and partially to organize the information in their own minds. These are the people that reach out to other people for their opinions, uh, and uh, but they don't really take any real action on their own. The fourth classification is the groundhog. Now, this is the person that just doesn't want to get involved. So when something difficult comes up, they have a tendency to just simply try to not be a, a part of it. They don't want to state their opinions because they fear that if they do, they might have somebody else uh, get upset and uh, they're afraid of what could happen if this happens. The fifth uh, role is that of the fantasizer. Now, the fantasizer is, uh, is embedded in the idea of how they perceive things should be. What actually is a reality is totally, completely foreign. Uh, case in point, I ha recently had uh, a situation with one of the things that I do uh, that was not panning out the way I wanted it to. Uh, I was actually in the process of being a little bit of a joiner, and I was sharing my experience with a friend. The response that friend gave to me was, well, if everything were right in the world, they should do this. And when that happened, I thought, this is really interesting because ultimately that really had no bearing on the situation that I was in. Uh, what somebody else should or should not do is something I have no control of. And my normal stance is one we're going to talk about in just a moment. I'm more focused on what it is that I can do to change a situation. But uh, this person in the fantasizer state that she was in was more focused on the way things ought to be if everything were right in the world. And uh, I think the benefit that she was getting from that is if she can look at things from a moralistic point of view, maybe it makes her feel a little bit better about the overall situation. Uh, this person also has a very positive frame of mind most of the time. Uh, she just has the innate belief that everything is going to work out okay in the end. And that I find also a fantasizer type position because not everything works out on its own in the end. And uh, for me, being in a position where I want to fantasize about what I would like things to be can actually end up being a waste of time and it doesn't fit the other values that I have in my life. Uh, but for the person who, who enjoys this particular role and uses this particular character, behavior characteristic, maybe they receive the validation that they're looking for in that situation. Okay, and the next 
type of characteristic that comes up in the way people handle issues that come up in their life is what I call the blamer or the accuser. And these are the people that are always looking for the person that's responsible for the problem. They never look at their own responsibility in the situation. They have a tendency to want to find the person that they can blame or accuse to uh, for the problem. And uh, that seems to satisfy what it is that they're looking for. They don't often go beyond that. Once they have established blame, uh, they it, they revert back more to uh, the victim or uh, the groundhog stance. Uh, if they don't revert back to that, once they have made the accusation, they have a tendency to be very vindictive and move forward in annihilating the person that they have decided to accuse. Uh, the benefits of this are you do have, it is a little bit more rational way, at least you're looking for some kind of solution. Uh, the detractions from this is if you waste a lot of time going after somebody else, oftentimes you never begin to see what your role is. And each one of us has a role in what goes on in every aspect of our lives. Okay, and the last characteristic or role that people play is what I call the stoic. And this is the role that I try to stay in. This, uh, the stoic typically is the person who will step back and take a look at the situation. They do identify the things they have control of and what they don't have control of. The focus in their mind is to resolve the issue and to make things happen the way they want them to happen. And uh, they use the information that they gather as they step back and look at it to galvanize themselves, to determine what it is that they can do, and then begin that process to make things happen to resolve the issue. So, which of these seven characteristics or roles do you play in a crisis? How do they serve you? And are there changes that you would like to make? Once again, each of these roles has their place, and there are times that it would be appropriate for each of us to play any or all of these roles. The important thing, like I said earlier, is being able to identify how effective being in that role is, and then having the tools at hand to make any changes that you need to make so that you can have more effectivity in taking control of your life. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. And when you do subscribe, be sure to click on the bell so that you are notified of future videos in this series, as well as other video series that come up on our channel. And share it with your friends. I would love to hear what you think. What role or roles do you play in a crisis or when you realize that changes need to be made in your life? And what plans, if any, do you have to resolve the issues that you face? Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye now.